Hey folks, are you looking to up your audio game on your live streams and maybe your Zoom meetings? Stick around, I'll show you how. All right, because of the pandemic, as you can see, I am a guitar teacher and a lot of my classes, actually all of my classes moved online as a result. And I had to figure out a way to get the best audio possible to my students. I wanna make their experience as enjoyable as possible so I can get my educational point across. Uh, this was easier said than done as I thought that maybe I could just use my computer and everything would be great. But unfortunately it doesn't work like that. What you need is an internal mixer that can mix all of your audio sources together. So for example, right now you can hear my microphone. Uh, you can also hear my guitar. And everything is in a nice stereo sound. I add a little bit of a delay and reverb so you could hear that effect in there. And this is a pristine stereo quality. So how did I do that? Let's take a look. Okay, so the name of the company that makes this particular software is Rogue Amoeba, and the software name is Loopback. Now there are some other softwares out there, but I haven't really investigated. I just kind of found this and I stuck with it and it's worked great for me. So if you go to the Rogue, Media, Rogue Amoeba website, you will see some of these options here. And of course you wanna uh, click on the loop back here and you will be presented with this page here, which you could try for free. And I might suggest that there are some limitations though. Uh, in order to get the most out of it, you're gonna wanna purchase it, of course. However, there is a fee. It's around $100, $110, something like that. But in my mind, it's a great investment and Maybe you could even, if you are a student or a teacher, you could get a uh, discount if you actually email them, which is what I did. And lo and behold, not only that, but my personal college that I teach at actually covered that for me. They reimbursed me for it. So I, I'm not out of my pocket at all. But if you do have to pay for it, I think it's definitely worth $100. All right, so once you download it onto your computer, you will be presented with something like this. This is just the default uh, settings here, but of course you can rename it if you wanted to rename it Zoom Meeting or something like that. And this is where you populate your audio sources. So right now it has this default pass-through. I actually don't even use that. I just delete it. And you can start adding sources from your computer. I will say you have to have those apps open for it to show up here. So for example, if I wanna add this microphone that I'm talking to, I just have this little, um, lapel mic here that's a usb mic i got on amazon for like 17 dollars or something i can add that and you can see it's actually working you can see the audio bouncing up and down there showing you that we got some signal all right i could add maybe my firefox because sometimes i like to jam along the backing tracks for my students and i can also add my logic pro and you can keep going on and on if you have pro tools you could use that and you can get a nice pristine stereo sound out of it. So this is the one that I particularly use right here. You can see I have a lot of audio sources, but I don't have them all on at once. Sometimes I wanna show my students a quick time movie, so I want them to hear the audio, of course, so I can just turn that on or off. So I just kind of leave it populated and I just leave the things that I'm using on. So what you see is everything is routed to these little stereo mixer here. And whatever you have named here, named your thing here, I call mine Loopback Zoom. That's what you're gonna look for when you open up your Zoom preferences. You're gonna look for whatever you gave that a name to. I call mine Loopback Zoom because I use it mostly for my Zoom meetings, but also says, lets me know it's my Loopback program. Okay, let's open up the preferences for Zoom. And you'll see here I have for my audio source, you have a, depending on how many you have, I have quite a bit here actually, but you can see I have my loopback zoom highlighted there and you can see my voice is going through there. If I play a little guitar, that's going through there also. And I will say if you are using zoom a lot and you want to uh, really have a nice presentation, if you have the option, if you scroll down a little bit, you'll see this thing that says music and professional audio. You wanna check this box that says show in meeting the option to enable the original source. What this will do is it bypasses any of the internal compressors or limiters or gates that might be on Zoom, which is great for consumer use. It's basically there to kind of help squash any feedback if you're using actual speakers and maybe your computer mic. When you're actually doing something like this using loopback, you wanna turn that off so the audio is unaffected as it's going through. So if you have that option, make sure you check that. Okay, so here I have a little funky jam up in my YouTube. I'm just gonna jam along to it just to give you an idea of what it could potentially sound like. You 
in here I can actually talk over it also. And you can adjust all these levels in a way that you can effectively talk over what you're doing and describe what you're doing as you're playing along. Okay, here's our logic session. I also have some MP3s in here, but because my logic is going through uh, the loopback, uh, you should be able to hear that with nice, pristine quality also. <laughs> Hopefully you can hear all the reverb and delays and stereo and everything. So if your student or your listener is listening with headphones, it'll be the exact same thing that you are hearing in your headphones. Some other great uses for this is that, of course, if you're doing a live stream, many musicians like myself, we're not playing any gigs right now. So, uh, you know, we like to engage with our friends and our fans through live stream concerts, but that can be a challenge because, uh, you know, what do you do? You put an iPhone up in the corner and everybody's playing at the same time and it's clipping and you don't know how it sounds and it's not really happening for your listener, boo. I think, uh, you know, it's your obligation to try to get it to sound as best as possible. So what you can do with loopback is you can actually set up a, a Pro Tools or a Logic session, get everything mixed and sounding pristine, even you can use all your effects and everything, compressors, reverbs, get it sounding sweet, and then send that signal to your live stream via Facebook or maybe if you're doing a YouTube live type thing. I'm actually recording this in OBS. So if you're a live streamer, you can use this for that. And of course, you can hear you can get a great sound quality through that. If you're doing these things and you're getting a little frustrated with your Zoom meetings or your Zoom lessons and stuff like that, this is a great option. There is a couple other applications that are really amazing just as a side note. For example, uh, I was in the middle of mixing a record. The pandemic hit and we couldn't get along or we couldn't get together anymore. I started doing it over Zoom and it was brilliant because he could actually hear the exact same mix that I was hearing. Any adjustments I made to the mix, he could hear in real time. Uh, another thing is collaborating. Sometimes I get on Zooms with uh, some songwriter friends I know. I might have a logic session open. I might get some ideas down that I can just temp in. They can hear how it sounds. And then of course I can go back and perfect it. Another amazing thing is, is that I actually had a friend of mine ask me how I set my computer up, which is the reason why I'm doing this video. Once he downloaded Loopback, I said, you know, go ahead and set up your logic session now he's a drummer so he needs about eight tracks to record his drums so I actually went on a zoom meeting and took control of his computer and set up his whole logic session he mic'd up his drums we got them sounding sweet we put compression and reverb and everything just like a studio quality and now when he teaches that's what his students hear so it's really amazing so there's all kinds of applications for it of course if you're a music professional you're always concerned about high quality audio it's very important to you i think this is a great solution it's not the only one out there there are other ones but um this is the only one i've really tried and i stuck with it so i, I that's that's why I'm talking about it and I've had many people ask me how I'm actually uh, using my audio. I will also say if you are teaching online or engaging with students and stuff like that online, I struggle with a number of uh, webcams and I bought about three over the past year. None of them really lived up to my expectations so I figured out a way to use my iPhone which has an amazing camera on it. I'm using this app called Filmic and I'm running out of my iPhone through a converter that converts the lightning to a HDMI cable and then to a capture card into a USB port. Sounds complicated, but it's not. It's really simple and also charges your phone at the same time too. So it's very cool. All that stuff is probably under $50. So a great investment. I also invested in a few lights so you can see that um, uh, hopefully it's a, visually it's a little bit more pleasing and you can see everything that's happening on the fretboard and all kinds of stuff like that. You can really up your streaming game, whether it be live streams or whether it be uh, Zoom lessons and stuff like that. So I highly recommend it. All right, as always, like, share, subscribe. Cheers for now. Thanks for joining. <music>